Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends, I may say. It's really a pleasure to be here with you. Um, and I have the honor and the privilege to talk to you about today's abutment design, or as I would recall it, the agony and ecstasy of implant abutment selection. Before I'm starting here with the topic of implant selection, I would like to give credit to the team I'm working with. I'm a prosthodontist, so I heavily rely on my surgical team in Ludwigshafen, which is close to Mannheim, like 45 minutes from the airport of Frankfurt, and of course to my guys and my dear friends in the laboratory. This is a true team approach. When we are talking about implant abutments and today's implant abutment design, you might think this is an implant meeting and I know there are abutments available and some of them will fit to this particular implant I was just seeding. The ability of a prosthetic abutment material really to form a stable and healthy peri-implant tissue is basically characterized by two parameters. One would be namely the presence or absence of bone and of course, secondly, the presence or absence of soft tissue recession. This really forms what we call an implant success. Once we are relying on the success of implants and we're looking at the restoration, this is heavily influenced by the abutment design and material we are selecting for the particular case we are doing. And this is obviously the topic we are talking about. In this context, it is interesting to note that a recently published systematic literature review reveals that only nine articles, I'm repeating that, nine articles consider the influence of an abutment material on the soft tissue stability. Four of them are randomized clinical trials. Three of them are animal studies with contradictory results and two are uh, human histology of what I had the pleasure to work with in one group with Marco De Gidi and uh, my friend Adriano Piatelli, which I'm going to present to you right now. So talking about implant abutment design and the material, we have to make clear that we are copying something, and this is nature. We will consider talking about acrylic, polyether, ether ketone abutments. Of course, we are looking at metal abutments, well established as a material. We're looking at oxide ceramic abutment material and its influence of soft tissue health. And we are looking at newer technologies in digital dentistry, namely CAT CAM design, one or two piece abutments. And in that context, we are looking at the biocompatibility and of course the influence on tissue care, tissue health. And last not but least, we have seen that the peri-implant mucosa is heavily influenced by the color and material of the abutment. And we are looking at light dynamic of the abutment itself and, of course, of the restoration. So as David has framed it some years ago, I think it's like eight years ago, when we have been in Cancun, there was the meeting, the illusion of reality. We are so much into screws, vertical, horizontal, fixing them, screwdrivers, that sometimes we forget that we are looking for teeth. You know, the patients are coming for teeth, not for a superstructure, and they are not coming for implants. They want to bite, they need function, or they're looking for aesthetics. And the question arises, what is that? What is aesthetics? I mean, is that a subject feeling, a subjective feeling, different in culture, North America, by Europe? Or is that something we can objectively reproduce and rate? So are there any rating measurements for implant aesthetics as they are available for function? We know that there are parameters, objective parameters in conventional prosthodontics and restorative dentistry we all rely on. And what we are doing is really we're repeating them and transfer them to implant restorative dentistry. As we all know, they are all about proportion symmetry. They are about color. Transferring that to the mucosa, the peri-implant mucosa around implants, it is about the biotype, it is about the color, it is about the light dynamics, 
It is about form and structure, and at the end, really, it is the color of the restoration. So this is something what we are doing in conventional prosto, and of course in implant prostodontics as well. Meaning that we are aiming for the illusion of teeth, and I'm being very blunt with you here, are we succeeding every day? Because we have heard like 70% of all our work are single implants probably in the anterior region. And do we always achieve the illusion of natural teeth and a very nice aesthetic result? We in our office, we try. God knows we try, but we do not succeed every day. So we are aiming for aesthetics, of course, in the anterior region and in the posterior if this is required by the patient as well. So abutment design automatically goes together with the restoration we have selected for the particular case. This goes together in the restorative phase. And I recall and used to say, in a way a little provocative, there is the myth of aesthetics. If we are talking about implant dentistry and the experience of 40 years, we are looking at the definition of success and we see that there are only functional parameters considered for success, namely the implant stability, the degree of crestal bone loss, the peri-implant hygiene, and maybe the prosthetic complication rate. But we're totally missing an objective measurement, an object objective instrument to rate success with regards to aesthetics. So we have suggested and we have looked at different possibility and instruments to rate aesthetic to distinguish restorative and surgical material and techniques we are using, being able to deliver aesthetics or rather not. And we have published them in clinical implant dentistry and in the Journal of Restorative and Aesthetic Dentistry, as you can see here at the screen. And we have tried really to come up with an idea to measure success with regards to aesthetics. Because success is not only limited to auto-integration anymore. We need some instruments. We need some podium to talk, really. Are all the measurements, are all the techniques and materials we do today really good and aiming for aesthetics the way we want to have it? To distinguish what is valuable and what is rather not valuable. When we are talking about implant abutments, we are not talking about the final and the beginning because usually we are talking about provisional restorations before, during our integration and sometimes after until we deliver the final restoration. Although literature is inconclusive with regards to the aesthetic benefit of provisionalization, you know, the use of temporaries with adequate emergence and submergence profiles is recommended to guide and shape the peri-implant soft tissue. So sooner or later, all of us have used provisional restorations. We have used anatomical gingiva former on the base of polyether ether ketone acrylic, like the aesthetic cap, as you can see here for transgingival healing, for example. And we have, you have used adhesively bonded bridges like the Maryland concept for waiting for us integration. This is one example for provisional restoration and that's where we're starting with implant abutments, with acrylic. We have uh, had the honor uh, to participate in that particular kind of textbook in fundamentals in, uh, of aesthetic implant dentistry with my friend Ella Scari, which we have published last year. And they were asking me, is there new material available for this kind of restorations, temporary restorations? How are we gonna do that? And of course, the Maryland Bridge with a casted framework is something which is well established. We have done that for many, many years successfully. But in the age of digital dentistry, CAT CAM dentistry, we have different material available for the replacement, for the provisional re replacement of the incisors in the maxilla, for example. We do have CAT CAM blocks from um, acrylic. This is gl glass fiber reinforced blocks, which we can CAT CAM mill them. And then all of a sudden, we have one material. We have acrylic. It is tooth colored, it is white. With regards to the fracture strength, 
It is superior to what we have known in the classical Maryland concept, and we are using that quite often. We loot that with resin cement, and we create the future implant site before we even start. The concept of Obey Pontex is well established and well known within this group, and this is something we are doing together with the aesthetic caps, provisional gingiva formers, or we can call it the provisional first abutment restorations. Talking about provisional restorations and peak abutments, I would like to share this particular case with you. This is a young lady with congenitally missing lateral incisors. She went through ortho, they kept the space open, and as you can see after stage one surgery and healing, we are missing any proximal aesthetics. That means there is no papilla, not even the illusion of a papilla available. So it's not really about recreating, it is more about manipulations of tissue to that part of the oral cavity where we need something like the illusion of papillae. We are using, again, peak abutment. At this instance, these are protect abutments. And we are doing either at stage one surgery um, an index as we did here, and we're delivering at stage two surgery an individualized provisional restoration. Either it is screw retained from the palatal aspect, or we cement that. And this is what we have done for the two lateral incisors in this particular case. We have the two options of cement, or we have the option of either labially screw retained or orally screw retained. You see the axis sole of the screw right here. Both is possible. I would rather go for screw retained because we won't have any axis of cement in the provisional stage of prosto. And then we deliver, and we see that, of course, at that stage, the tissue is not matured at all, but we and the patients have now all the time to wait, and sometimes it is just about waiting. Time is on our side. This is at the time where we seeded the abutments and screw retained them, and this is at the time where we have soft tissue maturation. And this is almost a blueprint for what we are aiming for in the final restoration. We are looking at the soft tissue appearance, the color, and we see that a rather white or not that dark implant abutment would work well for this particular case. And then we always have to consider that patients are adding their own interpretation of aesthetics. This is hers, and I have to accept it although I'm not too happy about it from a dental point of view. So, once talking about the provisional restorations, of course you are waiting and saying, okay, what are the availabilities now with other material? When we are talking about different systems, and you have seen we talked about fixed size implant, this happens to be a case we have done with the Ankylos CX. We see that is a case with a more, uh, more challenging because we have not only an endo problem and persistent pain at that particular tooth, so we have some soft tissue recession here, and we have to go for soft tissue grafting. So we first have to go back, step back, do soft tissue grafting with my team in Perio here, and then we deliver just a classical adhesively bonded bridge. We are waiting for soft tissue sculpturing in the sense of uh, Ove Pontic design, and then we are going back to place the final implant. We see already at that stage, and this is the interacting of the restorative team, planning team with the surgical team, that there is bone missing. And of course, anybody could place an implant there, and we know that we need some augmentative material just to build up the buccal plate in there. So this is the provisional stage. This is what we come up with the soft tissue design before we even place the final implant. And we know, we know in the team approach that bone is needed, augmentation with bio auth and resorbable membrane, and we are waiting. We are waiting, time is on our side. There is no rapidity, no immediacy in here. We are waiting for soft tissue maturation, and of course we are waiting for us integration. This is at the stage where we reluted the Maryland bridge. This is the stage where we uncovered stage two surgery. In this instance, we have a labial axis of the screw, which is then filled with acrylic. And this is how we refer that back 
to the doctor who did the referral for us in that stage. So provisional restoration as one of the trigger to success with the aim for aesthetics, and this happens to be the peak abutments with the ankylos in here. Very reliable, it takes longer, but we have nice results. If we are looking at single versus multiple tooth replacement, we know that in the anterior side, without tissue deficiencies, we have predictable treatment outcomes, including aesthetics, because the tissue support is provided by the adjacent teeth. And we know very well that the, that the picture is totally different when we are looking at multiple implants next to each other. Multiple implants in the posterior region sometimes are not really that problem because it is not really in the focus of the aesthetic area of most of the patients. Nevertheless, even if we are planning offline navigation, if we do uh, cone beam or CT planning, and the implants are placed right where I need them prosthetically, and even if we are going for additional procedures like putting ceramic on the shoulder of a titanium abutment, which we have done the past years very often, the results are not always that predictable, and we have to talk to the patients, and they are not as nice as we would like to wish. So as I said, we try every day, but we do not succeed. So this is a conventional uh, porcelain fused to metal restoration on this particular case. When we are coming to the anterior sides, this is of course more important, and when we are talking about a particular system with a conical implant abutment connection, the discussion and the criticism came up that you need an additional restorative step because you're needing this jig the jig, the acrylic transfer key, and some of the restorative colleagues felt that this is an additional, not necessary step bothering them. So we use acrylic transfer keys in, in conventional prosthodontics for years, and this is one of the things we are doing regularly. So we didn't bother too much doing these kind of things just to transfer the laboratory uh, position to the patient's mouth. But we understand that this is uphill marketing and some of the doctors wherever in the world are bothered by that. Therefore, Densply has decided to give the option of an index with the CX version of the implant, which is a nice adjunct to what we have used for the past years. And restoratively for single teeth, for single tooth, this is an advantage, of course. We were convinced by the implant design, and I, as a restorative doctor, was convinced by a very simple thing I have seen, and I had the pleasure to work with my friends Marco and Adriano, when we did studies and looking at the outcome of submerged and immediately and uh, classically staged implants, where I saw the histology of Adriano, where he pointed out that even above the shoulder, above the acid-edged shoulder of the ankylos, we find newly formed bone. And do I care about it as a prosthodontist? Oh, yes, yes, very much so. Because this is going to support the soft tissue. This is going to have a big influence on the aesthetic outcome of my restoration. And yes, this is not only of the interest of the surgical team. The restorative team is interested in that as well. This is an example where we use titanium abutments. Titanium abutments in the anterior maxilla to replace these kind of teeth. This is a trauma case where we had to extract the anterior teeth. We had a setup by provisional restoration. This is a provisional bridge um, performed by a wax up. We went to the surgical stage together. After the teeth were extracted, we placed the implants in the area of the lateral incisors, and then we were going for immediate function. So we were aiming to restore the teeth immediately by the setup we have done. We use in this instance, of course, stable metal material available by titanium abutment, as you can see here, and it happens to be the CX version. We reline them by acrylic right at the stage one surgery. We are looking that we prevent any premature contact and as framed by Marco, this is non-functional immediate loading. 
and we dismiss the patient at stage one surgery. So titanium abutments within immediate function because of their stability to prevent micromotion. Once os integration, soft tissue integration has been established, we are looking for the final restoration. This is impression taking with a closed tray. This is the color selection with the visual and the digital art. And then, of course, we decided again for titanium abutments. If I'm saying, of course, if we are looking at the final picture here, this is what uh, Henry was talking about yesterday, the influence of the abutment material when it comes to color or discoloration. It is questionable if titanium is always the right selection for these kind of anterior cases if we have this kind of biotype of soft tissue. We know that there are alternatives. The first alternatives we were introduced to were from aluminum oxide for a long time ago. And as I said, there is now uh, clinical data and there is evidence in the literature that aluminum oxide works nicely in the anterior region. But in the posterior region or in high load strength areas, we need some stronger material. And stronger material came up with zirconium dioxide. Zirconium dioxide in this area where the soft tissue is thin, very fragile, and we need some different color of the material. So we were working with zirconium dioxide and had our drawbacks, and we were talking and looking at particular things. This happens to be a case, a referral case, with a question, is it possible to place an implant? I think this is not the adequate question anymore. The question is, what are we aiming for? Are we aiming for blending one tooth and the existing smile? And yes, we are trying that. So we are placing an implant. Of course, there is augmentation necessary. We need some bone. There's a resorbable membrane. And we're waiting for integration of the bone, the integration of the soft tissue. And finally, it is my job to integrate the restorative part, to give the illusion of a tooth. So this is the restorative phase. We are done. We reprep for the tooth. We did a very shallow and fine um, preparation for a ceramic veneer. And we take an impression of the abutment in this area right there. We have a try-in with a zirconia abutment, a circumzirconia abutment, as you can see here. And if we look at the color and the situation of the periimplant mucosa, I think this is adequate and this is the way to go. And this instance is it's a good alternative in there. We use full ceramic restorations on the teeth and, of course, a full ceramic restoration on the implant. And this is the sequence we are doing restoratively. First the teeth and the final results, if you look at that from a surgical point of view, recovering here the entire maxilla bone and blending in the teeth to have to be restored and the implant to give the smile, which is sometimes called the smile enhancement. So rating that by my subjective opinion, I always like my cases like this. But you know, I'm open to every discussion and now we are having the opportunity. We have instruments in our hand by new rating measurements where we can predictably and reproducibly discuss what is aesthetic and what lead, leads to aesthetic. So with regard to fracture strength, we did some surveys and some in vitro studies because we were very much concerned in the beginning about screw loosening for single implant restoration because that's a phenomenon we are all encountered in the past and in the future. Secondly, it's biocompatibility. It's the biological reaction to this kind of material. We have published in that in the Quintessence International and Journal of Periodontology. So what we have done to look at the fracture strength and to look at the incidence of possibly a higher screw loosening once we are using zirconium dioxide, we did an in vitro study with this kind of abutment, the zircon abutments. We um, screwed in by a defined torque. We measured the torque before cyclic loading. This is an in vitro study, before cyclic loading and after. We have to consider, and all of us are aware of that, that there is the phenomenon of transformation toughening, polymorphism of this kind of zirconia material, the crystal di design, the shape will change. And up to a certain extent, 
we do not see the fractures we have seen with alumina or other kind of ceramic material. This is irreversible. We know there is such a thing like aging of zirconia, which we do not know much about yet. And this is a field of interest we have to work in. So what we have found out that the fracture resistance for these kind of abutments is approximately for cyclic loading, simulating chewing forces in the oral ca cavity. It is not static loading, it is cyclic loading. It goes down to 270 newtons, which is not appropriate to restore in the posterior regions. To prevent any cracks, even micro cracks, as you can see here, shallow micro cracks on the surface on such abutments could really proceed into the middle deeper and deeper. And this might be a reason why such an abutment could break. And this is not what we would like to see to happen. Therefore, we need some alternatives in abutment material, abutment design, if we are looking for posterior regions. And now, in the age of digital CAT CAM dentistry, we have that available. I do like to keep my work as possible and as simple as I can. I'm rather a lazy guy in that instance, and I like to stick with one system. I'm very happy about that we have available one system in zirconium dioxide now with Zircon, together with Densply Degudent, where we have the opportunity to have two-piece CAT-CAM customized abutments, which actually means that we have a titanium insert with a sleeve from zirconium dioxide, which is then looted together and gives us the opportunity to take all the advantage of the ceramic, but having the strength of the titanium insert. And we digitally, by computer, can design our submergence profile and emergence profile to have the most anatomical and most fitting individual abutment for our particular case in here. This is available for anterior and posterior in two-piece CAT-CAM customized abutment. One example of that I would like to introduce you right here. This is after extraction of a tooth, some bone healing, implant placement, and then the restoration phase. This is not indicated for pure, just zirconium dioxide abutments coming from the shelves. So we have decided to take an impression. We have decided with our visual uh, shade selection to add always a digital one to be on the safe side. And then we are taking the impression, transfer that to the master cam. And then we are using these kind of skin abutments. Um, we started with Medidenta. There are different brands available, but as, uh, as I have said, this is now available in the family of Densply with Degudent. Scan abutments, scan abutments scanned in. We have the computer. We have the digital design done by the computer. We have an individual customized abutment available in here, which then gets the final restoration, of course, in the same system. So taking the advantages of the ceramic having the safety of the metal as the base in there, delivering single restorations in the posterior region. This happens to be two-piece CAT-CAM customized abutment. The future, of course, and the future arrives. We are right here. We have one-piece customized CAT-CAM designs, and we have the choice of the material in the same system. This is something coming up. I had the pleasure to be in one of the pilot groups, and I'm really happy that we are looking forward to having this kind of designs for anterior or posterior restorations, where we have the option to choose the material, the color if we're choosing for zirconium dioxide, and of course, the design. This is coming up with the Circon Art uh, system very soon, and I strongly believe that this is something we have to look forward for, and we have to look forward that the fracture, fracture strength and the clinical design as well. Having fixed restorations on one side, we have to look for removable prosthodontics on implants on the other side as well, because there we need some implant abutments as well. So we are talking about prefabricated two-piece or CAS2 abutments. Once we are looking at the CAS2 abutments, we are talking about the Auro base or UCLA kind abutments. But when we are talking about one or two piece abutments, we consider that, for example, for removable bar restoration in the anterior, taking an asilicon impression 
and then having a mastercast where we use MP pads to fit sleeves, giving us the opportunity to customize them and having then available restoration, bar restoration made from circon zirconia. We are absolutely not concerned in terms of breakage. We know the biocompatibility because we have delivered human histology results that the inflammation significance of the soft tissue around zirconia is much, much lower than around titanium or alloy. Therefore, we are proceeding on a regular basis going ahead and having zircon, zirconia bars like this, even with a cantilever, together um, with this design, with the framework, we are going ahead and having this restoration as we have learned that in classical prosthodontics and in implants prosthodontics with titanium or with gold or with metal, now we're proceeding the same with zircon like this. We close that and we have removable prosthodontics and of course the abutment design is important in function. This is something we are doing on a regular basis and we have good results. We have Prezi line attachments in the back, easily to replace, very cost effective when we see the patient back. One other opportunity in the restorative part, together with the abutment design and material, is of course the Sarconia Galvanus Conus technique. Whenever we are not able, or it's not possible, to restore soft tissue scars or alterations of the bone. If we have not the ideal underlying hard and soft tissue, but patients are asking for ideal aesthetics, we have to come up with a solution, and that could be removable prosthodontics, because the patient can choose. If we have not the opportunity to go back for augmentative procedures, or for soft tissue grafting and procedures, we are going now for removal of prosthodontics and this double crown technique. So we have primary crowns from zirconia on metal abutments, titanium abutments, and then we are looting them together. We went through a learning curve in that, meaning that we have used metal abutments, titanium in the beginning. Now we are skipping that phase and we just have zirconia abutments available and on top we have Galvano secondary copings on that. We duplicate, we have Galvano copings on top of them. We have a framework available and then we have a try-in in the patient's mouth. Meaning this part of a titanium or metal abutment, we're just skipping, we're going straight ahead to a zirconium dioxide abutment. We try in the primary copings, we try in the secondary copings, we intraorally lube the framework to the copings, the secondary galvano copings in the patient's mouth. Therefore, we need a good uh, looting agent which is now available in the same system and we're doing that in the upper and in the lower. We're taking an impression, an over-impression of all of that and then we're just dismissing the patient. Since we have looted the primary copings on the abutments, or we screw retained the zirconium abutments in there, we need a temporary intermediate prosthesis, which will be underlined, while we have the time to go ahead in the laboratory and work on the final restoration. That means the superstructure for this particular case. So this is the provisional in between underlined, and this is the final removable prosthodontics on these kind of abutments we were talking about. And again, if soft or hard tissue is not ideal and there's nothing we can do about it, this could be an alternative and removable aesthetic prosthodontics. It was my pleasure talking to you and I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. I enjoy the meeting very much. Thank you.